Hello from Oxford. I am here with uh, Victor Meyer Schoenberger from the Oxford Internet Institute. You're a professor here. You're very well known for your work on big data and the impact it has on the economy. You've wrote, written a, a best-selling book on, on big data and one on reinventing capitalism and the impact of the data economy on um, on the world and on, on businesses. So maybe we can talk a little bit about reinventing capitalism and and why you feel that, that the, the data economy is having an impact and what this impact might be. Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, having this conversation with me. When we look at the data age and the data economy, a lot of people say, and the economist even had it on its, uh, on its uh, title, that data is the new oil, is the, 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 the wonderful, valuable resource mm -hmm. uh, that we will transact on, on the markets. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's true. I mean, data is valuable. But there's more to it. Uh, and uh, to me, data is not just um, uh, a product, a resource that we transact on the market, that we sell or buy on the market. But data itself changes how the markets operate. And that's very important because that reshapes our economy. Mm -hmm. So um, how does that work? Well, very simple and straightforward. Uh, we use the market in, in, in our economy uh, to not just um, have supply meet demand. That's what you learn in, at university. Um, but the market actually has a far more important function, and that is to help people coordinate with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and therefore, other than in the army where everybody, in order to be coordinated, needs to have the same goal, march in the same direction, in the market you don't have to. You just have to find somebody with a complementary goal, mm. um, and then you can transact. And the market has basically enabled humans to be superbly successful in coordinating with each other. That's been driving the economy. Um, and that's wonderful. Um, the market is also so great because uh, information that flows in the market is then translated into decisions um, at a decentral level. So uh, everybody makes his or her own purchasing decisions. That's great because if somebody makes a stupid decision, the market doesn't go under. Mm -hmm. uh, just the person is hurt, but not the market itself. Mm -hmm. So that gives our economy resilience and robustness mm -hmm. and all that. Um, there was one problem that we've had for a couple of hundred years, and that is that all of this information in the market is very hard to distill and then transfer into a decision. Mm -hmm. We are overwhelmed uh, as human beings with our cognitive sense. And, and so we have found a crutch, and the crutch was price. We distilled all of our preferences into a price, price we're willing to pay, price we're willing to ask. Yeah. And then if we find the right price, uh, a match happens in the market, and and we go and transact. And that works beautifully to an extent. Uh, but the problem, of course, is that when we distill everything to price, we think that everything can be expressed in price. But there are many other qualities that, that we need to compare in order to find the right product. Mm. And if we just look at price, we go for the cheapest product rather than the, the best product. Mm. Uh, and that's been a, a tendency and that's been creating inefficiencies in the market. Mm. And that's where we are now, where we're changing now, because we are no longer just looking at price. We are looking at so many other qualities of products in order to find the perfect match. Yeah. So when my students, for example, try to find the hotel in Paris, they go on some of those sites and they um, then choose, what do I want? You know, I want the bar scene to be close by, I want free Wi-Fi, I want public transport, and then they look at reviews and photographs. Uh, then they even go and take a stroll around with Google Street View. And then they have maybe four or five hotels that they want to choose from. And then they look at price. So price is still there, but it's not the determinate uh, mm -hmm. uh, quality anymore. And that gives them a really good match. They really love what they're purchasing mm -hmm. because it fulfills their preferences. Yeah. It meets their preferences. And so the market is really doing, this kind of data-rich market is really doing well in enabling people to coordinate, to fulfill their preferences and to make them happy. And that's what we are seeing. That's the 
magic sauce of platforms. Mm -hmm. Amazon is not so phenomenally successful because it runs a marketplace. It's so phenomenally successful because it runs a marketplace, has a communication platform on the marketplace, and has a recommendation engine on top. It's the vertical integration that creates a really splendid purchasing or a buying experience mm. that makes Amazon so successful. People find the right match on Amazon. So you, we, we just talked about earlier about your, your work with the German government. Mm. Um, you're advising the, the government on the impact of the, this digital economy and how they can transform um, what would you say are some of the biggest impacts then of this, the, the, the fact that data now has become a central part of our economy? The, uh, one of the central uh, issues that we see is that those that have access to a lot of data um, can run data-rich marketplaces. And data-rich marketplaces are far better than conventional marketplaces or conventional firms. Mm -hmm. The conventional firm is also a way by which we coordinate with each other. Um, but the conventional firm over the last 200 years has already been become quite efficient in how to use information and data inside, you know, double book, double, um, double entry bookkeeping, mm -hmm. uh, cost accounting, Taylorism, all that helped um, make the information flows inside the company really efficient. Yeah. Uh, but all of those benefits have been reaped already, right? The, the company is pretty efficient. Now what we see is that the market that was inefficient, the price-based market was inefficient in its matching, thanks to data is becoming very efficient. So now we're pushing the data to customers into the market and use it as a differentiator. That's right. And so that means that marketplaces become far better in coordination than let's say firms, mm. which means that classical hierarchical firms, 200,000 employees or whatever, mm. global firms, um, will have a much harder time in the future. And when we look at who are the big firms that are winning, the Amazon, the Googles, the Facebook, the Apples, when you look closer, they're not classical traditional firms anymore. Google is the, the world's largest data-rich market for advertisements. Facebook is the second largest data-rich market for advertisements. Um, uh, Apple is the world's largest data-rich market for apps. Mm -hmm. um, Airbnb for overnight stays, Uber for short uh, distance uh, travel, and so on and so forth. These companies are not classical companies. They're data-rich markets, mm -hmm. and that's where uh, it's pointing. And so if you have a traditional company, you need to reinvent yourself. Okay, so if what do you think companies need to do to reinvent themselves? How, how do they grasp this? Where do they start? So um, a classical answer, a strategic answer is to automate, to start automating in a company. That to me is a problematic strategy because when you start automating, you're basically cost cutting. You're trying to reduce your cost. But then somebody else is doing the same thing and you are in a downward spiral of cost cutting and cost cutting and cost cutting and you're not value generating. Mm. And so what smarter companies do is to bring the market into the firm. Mm. Daimler-Benz is currently doing that, trying to reduce from seven hierarchical layers in a traditional company to three, creating inside competition, talent pools, all these kind of things, bringing the market essentially into the company. Mm. Uh, Spotify is a champion in bringing the market inside the company. Highly decentralized, competitive to the core, uh, very little uh, hierarchies inside. Um, they have even things like the failure wall, uh, where um, tribes that are small groups inside Spotify publish their failures to the rest of the company. Mm. You would not have that in traditional companies, right? You mm. would not cherish the failure. Mm. But at Spotify, they say, we paid so much for that failure, we might as well learn from it. Mm. And, and so that's bringing in the market. Very good, so we need to change the, the organizational structures, the culture to some extent. Exactly. Um, value, data, I, I guess, one of the challenges is that the more data you have, the more powerful you become as an organization, which makes platform businesses so powerful and companies that leverage big data. Um, 
from a, a government perspective or a market perspective then has what role does government ha has to play in all of this in, in regulating this and making sure that you don't have a few very powerful companies that control all the data well that's exactly where we are at right now and then sort of the the, 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 the the political answer is we need to tax them or we need to break them apart and so forth and I don't think these are good answers mm -hmm. because we really need to understand the problem mm -hmm. and the problem is quite uh, simple and straightforward in for, forever large companies have had a scale effect advantage mm -hmm. when you're larger you produce at lower cost mm -hmm. it's obvious and so you have a concentration effect in the market the countervailing effect in the market has always been innovation and um, that is that the small company may have higher costs but may have a better idea mm. and so human ingenuity can actually help keep the market competitive and work against concentration the problem that we have today is that human ingenuity is at least in part supplanted by uh, machine learning artificial intelligence and machine learning learning from a lot of data autonomous driving is one example and so if you have access to more and more data you are quite innovative mm -hmm. and that means smaller and startup companies have a real problem because they have very little data available to them and so with the best idea they cannot train their machines with enough training data mm -hmm. to realize that idea and so the key lever therefore is access to data what we need to do from a policy perspective thus is not take money from Jeff Bezos and give it to the public coffers so, or break up Mark Zuckerberg. There may be reasons for that, but, but, but not market reasons. No. Um, what, what we need to do in order to instill innovation and competitiveness in our market, particularly here in Europe, is to broaden access to data. Mm -hmm. And that's where policy is at. So how can this happen in reality? What are some of the tools that we could put in place to make sure startups have access to, to data? What's been put forward by experts, including myself, is that, that large companies would have to take a small sliver of their data and make it publicly available to their competitors, for example. Yeah. Uh, 5% or 1% of, of Amazon's data randomly selected made available to competitors. It might sound crazy, but that's what the US Department of Justice has already done when Google bought um, a travel company with a lot of data. And they said, you, Google, you can do that, but you need to let your competitors, including Microsoft, access some of the data of that travel company to learn from. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what we are suggesting as experts with access to data is not something outlandish and socialist, it's something that the capitalist United States has, uh, has mandated Google to do because it enables markets to stay competitive and uh, innovation to flourish. And without these two things, the economy is going bust. That's great. So what would you say were some of the, the, the key messages and takeaways from reinventing capitalism? The key takeaway is that the market is going to win, the data-rich market, thanks to data, is going to win over the conventional market, mm. that's price-based, but also over the conventional hierarchical firm. That banks and other uh, players in the financial services industry that have banked on the tremendous role of price and money will have a much harder time in the future because all of the the value that's been generated in the past mm -hmm. uh, for their services is being diminished. Mm -hmm. It's a commodity product or a commodity service that they're offering. Uh, and that uh, those companies that run data-rich markets, like the Amazons of the world, really have a money printing press at their hands. Mm -hmm. And if we are not careful from a policy perspective, then that might dry up innovation. Fantastic. Thank you, Victor. Thank you.